Welcome scholars. This video is some slides about hybridization to help you further understand the uh, other video that had a little bit more of the theory in it, which was also unfortunately hand drawn. And so it's a little bit better when I have actual images that I can share. As you saw in that other video, one of the central ideas with bonding is that we can think about bonds as being shared pairs of electrons, but we can also think of them as being overlapping orbitals between atoms. And this idea of overlapping orbitals is also called valence bond theory, and it was created or uh, described by Linus Pauling. It's very much based on the quantum mechanics in terms of the orbitals overlapping and the waves interfering either constructively or destructively. And this overlap of orbitals, this can happen with a direct overlap between the orbitals. And when that overlap happens between the two atoms, as in the case of this H2 molecule or hydrogen, when that overlap happens directly between those two atoms, this is known as a sigma bond for the Greek letter sigma. The sigma bond, this orbital overlap, is what we think of as resulting in an actual single bond. And this is, a, again, when the electron density is the highest between the two atoms, directly between the two atoms, along what we call the bond axis. In the case of hydrogen, these are s orbitals, they're spherical, and you can see the darker shading of green between the two hydrogens there. This happens when we have atomic, bond, uh, atomic orbitals, especially with hydrogen, no problem. Those are the only orbitals that are there for that hydrogen that have electrons in them. And so there's no problem thinking through this. However, when we have more than one atom bonding to that one atom, there might be different things going on in terms of the bond angles. And we already saw that we want to be able to spread atoms out to as far apart as they can so that those electron pairs are repelling each other. That's if we're thinking about valence shell electron pair repulsion. But hybridization is really the reason why we observe those shapes that we saw in Vesper. And hybridization is really just the mixing of atomic orbitals. So we take different orbitals from the same atom, and when we hybridize these orbitals, we create new sets of equivalent or energy orbitals that are then able to go on and form covalent bonds with other atoms. So in the example here, the atom they're showing you, the electron configuration they're showing you, the orbital diagram, is for carbon, with two electrons in the 2s, two electrons in the 2p. If those electrons are able to spread out, then every orbital has only one at electron. Then when they hybridize, those wave functions mix, and you get four orbitals in, so you get four orbitals out. If you mix a single s orbital with three p orbitals, then the four orbitals you get out are all called sp3 orbitals. Note here that the exponent is telling us how many orbitals are mixed or hybridized, not how many electrons are in that orbital. And so these sp3 orbitals, since four of them are formed, the farthest apart that can be in three dimensions, that those can be in three dimensions, is 109.5 degrees. This is where we get the tetrahedral shape from. So anything that's tetrahedral is automatically going to have a hybridization of sp3. There we go. Okay. If you have carbon in the center and the carbon is sp3 hybridized, then you could take four hydrogen atoms and each of those four hydrogen atoms could have its s orbital overlap with an sp3 orbital from the carbon. This gives us our four bonds, our four single bonds. They're also called sigma bonds. And those four bonds appear to be at 109.5 degrees from each other. If we look at some other examples that have tetrahedral electron geometries, we notice that the lone pairs of electrons have to be at the same energy as the sigma bonds. And because of this, anything that's tetrahedral for its electron geometry 
which includes ammonia and water, these are always going to be sp3 hybrids in terms of their orbitals. And if you look at those hybridized orbitals, you can see for the nitrogen that the sp3 orbitals in nitrogen only have three unpaired electrons, which is why the nitrogen only forms three sigma bonds. Oxygen in those sp3 hybrid orbitals only has two unpaired electrons, which is why the water only forms two sigma bonds. When we move along and we look at what these look like when certain orbitals do not hybridize, if we only take two of those p orbitals and an s, then we have two plus one or three orbitals in, which means we're gonna get three orbitals out. The three orbitals out for this hybridization will be sp2, leaving behind one unhybridized p orbital. The hybridized orbitals, the three sp2s, if this happens on a carbon and if this happens on an oxygen, then they are the ones that can form sigma bonds, but the unhybridized p orbitals, these are what are available to go on and form double or triple bonds. We call these additional bonds pi bonds. It's called a pi bond because that electron density is not directly along the axis between the two atoms. If we take a look at the carbon and we take a look at the oxygen, we can see that the carbon has this p orbital above and below the plane. The three sp2 orbitals that are hybridized are in a trigonal planar shape. We see the same thing for the oxygen. The sp2 orbitals are in a trigonal planar shape with the single p orbital pointing up and down. And if we look at formaldehyde on the, all the way on the right side, we see that the carbon and the oxygen have sp2 orbitals that each overlap to form a sigma bond. This is one of the two bonds. And that their p orbitals that are above and below the plane also overlap. Now this, even though it looks like there's three regions of overlap, because the overlap above and below the plane is because of the same two orbitals, whenever those two orbitals overlap, it only represents an extra single bond. And so altogether here, even though we see three regions of overlap, this is actually only two bonds. Because these overlaps above and below the planes are not as much overlap as the overlap along the bond axis, this is also why double bonds are not exactly twice the bond energy of a single bond between the same two atoms. If we move along and look at, say, carbon dioxide or acetylene, aka ethylene, eth ethyne, um, this is similar to the carbon in the carbon dioxide example, except both of these two carbons are sp. So they both have two unhybridized p orbitals. Those two unhybridized p orbitals are pointing up and down, and forwards and backwards. And those two p orbitals each overlap, and they almost like form this cage of electrons around the sig sigma bond between the two carbons in the center. Because all these electrons are very exposed, these pi electrons are very exposed, this is a very reactive molecule, and in, case, and in fact, sometimes this is commonly called acetylene, and it's used for welding and for special kinds of high temperature torches. When we go beyond carbon, and we go down to the third period and lower, we of course can see octet exceptions. We can see expansions to the octet rule. The reason why this can happen is because we can get d orbitals involved in hybridization. These atomic orbitals, the s, the three p's, and the five d orbitals, because they're all in the same shell, they're all relatively close together in terms of energy, and the three d can actually come in and hybridize with the p and the s. And so if you've got five bonds around something, if you have a trigonal bipyramidal electron geometry, then that means you have an sp3d hybrid. Remember, the number of orbitals in equals the number of orbitals out. For us to get five orbitals out, we have to have five orbitals in. 
the five orbitals in are one of the S's, all three P's, and only one of the D's, so that's why it's an SP3D hybrid. We see the same thing if we look at octahedral to form six equivalent bonds, whether it's an octahedral molecular geometry or whether it's one of the ones based on the octahedral electron geometry, those all require six spots for those electron pairs, and so they are sp3d2 hybrids. You can use these literally for any electron geometry you see, even if there's additional double bonds there, as in the case with, say, phosphate or sulfate, those are still going to be tetrahedral shapes. Those would still be sp3 hybrids. So then that's it. Um, please join us in the chat and discussion to ask questions or for more examples of these.